Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, Dave Flynn with Public Works. I'm here with um, uh, Ron DeCarly with San Luis Council of Governments and uh, their staff to provide the presentation. Um, I'll do an introduction and then we'll turn it over to staff from SLOCOG. Um, but uh, again, the action before you today is really two items. There's a um, um, first, we're going to review the proposed sales tax measure, which is an item that was presented to you as the Council of Governments body on April 6th. And um, that's really a proposal of a half cent sales tax des designated for transportation with a duration proposed at nine years and um, would require a special tax uh, requiring a two thirds approval by the voters. The other action that we'll have after the conclusion of Slowcock's presentation is a designation of local transportation authority. This would be one of the first steps in enacting a, a tax measure is uh, the Board of Supervisors would have to establish who the local transportation authority would be. And uh, as part of that, um, local transportation authority, there would be a, an ordinance which would then guide their work. This will be for future action by your board. Um, with that, though, I would um, ask um, Kendall Flint from uh, uh, Resource Government Services or Regional Government Services, who um, has uh, um, provided the, uh, um, the uh, background. So... <coughs> Good afternoon. I apologize because you are going to see a lot of the same things we saw a couple weeks ago, but I think it would be very useful for some of the folks that may be watching at home. Again, I'm Kendall Flint. I'm the consultant working with <coughs> San Luis Obispo Council of Governments on this particular project. And just as a reminder, the reason that we're looking at this at this time is the fact that Sacramento has absolutely failed to bring the funds back to local government for local streets and roads, and these things have been very <clears throat> challenging for all the jurisdictions in California. You couple that with the reduction in the gasoline taxes over the last 20 years. You can see up here in 1993, we saw almost a third of the revenue coming from gas taxes. That's down to almost 12%. And that's for two reasons. One, the gas tax itself has not been adjusted for inflation, and the gas tax has been lowered by the legislature. You couple that with more efficient cars, um, hybrids, this sort of thing, and it's a recipe for disaster in terms of generating funding. Sacramento is currently considering an alternative plan that would have us tax on vehicle miles traveled, and that is currently being tested. There's also several lawsuits waiting up to be filed on that. Um, based on uh, lack of privacy and other kinds of issues. So we're not seeing, despite lobbying efforts from all of the counties, League of Counties, League of Cities, the a coalition of metropolitan planning organizations and a variety of other groups, including the California Transportation uh, CTC, we're just not seeing the legislature coming free. So. We're at a place right now where it's sort of what do we do in terms of getting funding for the projects that the region needs. So the idea at this time is to really explore self-help counties, which have been used in other jurisdictions quite successfully. It also allows us to leverage matching funds that other counties in California have been able to get and therefore fund their projects, much like you see in Santa Barbara, uh, Sacramento, Los Angeles, and other areas. At this point, 81% of the population in California is currently living in a self-help county, which means their agencies are generating revenue to be used for local streets and roads. Last year, that added up to $4.5 billion in uh, infrastructure improvements statewide. There are currently 15 counties that are considering becoming self-help counties, and San Luis Obispo is obviously one of those. Um, there are nine that we believe are viable for the November election. Um, our numbers, when we come up in a moment talking about the outreach effort, are on par with many of those, and that's one of the reasons that the time is now to move forward. Um, as you know, this generates $25 million a year based on a half-cent sales tax. Uh, the funds would be only used for local projects, local jurisdictions, regional projects, projects that are here in the San Luis Obispo County area. It also, as I mentioned, allows us to compete for matching funds and grants. This is not only for regional projects, but could be used for safe routes to schools, pedestrian enhancements, a variety of different things that come up in every cycle that allow us to tap into those revenues. The plan itself is established as having a clearly defined set of projects and programs. We know from speaking with voters and speaking with folks in the community, they do not want to see a vague or very... Um, 
uh, non-specific package of investments. They want to know if they're going to support this, where their money's going. And that's one of the reasons we've been working very closely with all of the member agencies to help them tell us what they're going to identify as those projects and what they might look like as regional projects going forward. And I believe we're going to talk about that in a moment as that applies to the county. There's also a provision for a citizen oversight committee. We want an independent group of folks to be able to look at the plan and look at the expenditures on an annual basis to make sure that the funds were put out exactly the way we told the taxpayers they would in fact be spent. SLOCOG would manage that process and ensure that the folks get those annual reports, that they have the materials they need in order to make those um, informed decisions, and be able to provide that type of safeguard to ensure that the taxpayers are adequately represented. What we learned in the outreach program, um, as you may recall, we did a number of things. We held over 75 community presentations countywide. Those were attended by almost 700 people. We conducted a series of uh, focus groups in the North County, South County, the San Luis Obispo area, and then in the coastal area, basically Los Osos um, up to the north. In addition to that, we conducted a telephone survey. The survey was conducted using both landlines and cell phone lines as well as internet access to ensure that we would have the most accurate cross-section of participants. The model was set up using not high propensity voters, but most likely voters, because in the upcoming election, we're expecting that it's not going to be the status quo. In a presidential election, especially the colorful one we are in right now, we are anticipating that it's going to be a big turnout. That's one reason we're looking at newly registered voters and other different folks. What they told us very consistently after all that outreach was they are very concerned about local street and road repair. That's everything from potholes to pavement to sidewalks, all kinds of things, but they were very consistent. It was the number one item across all the cities and the county. Second up was really concerned about bicycle and pedestrian access. That would both be for safe routes to schools as well as some of the more well-known bike trails, Bob Jones Trail, things like this, and along in the coastal areas, connecting communities together. We also heard that from folks in Templeton and in a variety of other areas. And then finally, the third thing we heard the most about was increasing services for transit and specifically for point-to-point -point services for seniors, veterans, and folks that were not able to use public transportation. So based on all that, um, we came up with a, an allocation of the funds. And this is basically what you would see over a nine-year period. Half of the money going to local control for local, local municipalities to figure out how they want to spend it. 25% would be for regional projects, projects that have a regional benefit in terms of reducing traffic congestion and improving safety and goods movement. Then we have 15% that would be for bicycle and pedestrian programs, and then an additional 10% for public transportation. And this is sort of how it breaks out on some of the other pieces. All of these include a 1% off the top for SLOCOG. And that basically is to cover the costs of administering the Citizen Advisory Committee and oversight, as well as managing the delivery of the regional projects, as well as the bicycle and pedestrian projects. That's all of the you know requests for proposals, all the other things that go along with that, and of course, coordination with Caltrans and the member agencies. The funds are intended not to replace replace local funds that are currently allocated for local street and road repair, but to enhance those. And then finally, as I mentioned previously, we're going to have those annual audits reporting and, and taxpayer oversight. So we look at regional projects. These are some of the things that rose to the top um, based on the polling. There was a number of folks that are concerned and we're considering uh, funding for uh, congestion relief for Shell Beach, Pismo area along 101, uh, congestion relief in the South City area, uh, that would be LOVR to Prado in that general vicinity. North County came up with the 101 and 46 interchanges, and there's some questions about improvements that might be able to make there. And then North Coast <laughs> Highway 1 improvements, basically from Morro Bay on up to Cayucas. Bicycle and pedestrian connectivity, um, these are the funds that we're talking about for these regional projects. There are three projects that have been identified at this point, one being the City to Sea Bob Jones Trail, uh, the Atascadero Templeton Connector, and the Morro Bay Cayucas Connector. That is an, there's enough money in the plan to cover all three of those, but there would be additional funds left over, and the idea is to allow individual jurisdictions to compete or to propose on those dollars to fund local projects that support bicycle and pedestrian 
activities. In public transportation, we did have one minor change on this that's been suggested by the transit operators. This is 10%, but they're thinking now that we'd rather see a 6% going to transit with half to maintenance and half to, uh, if you will, operations, which could be increasing the number of, um, uh, increasing the number of uh, lines or stops or frequency, that sort of thing. And then 3% for projects that would go for seniors, veterans, and persons with disabilities. The feeling was that as the population is aging, it was important to allocate more resources to that, and they feel like this would be a good way to do it and a, and a better use of the funds. And then finally, 1% would be for transportation demand management categories, again, improving connectivity. In the local road repair, um, there, I think there's a little confusion at the Slowcog board meeting, so I want to make sure that we're very clear about this. For the 50% that is under local control, it is absolutely under local control. In other words, each municipal agency will determine for themselves where they want to spend the money. Within that budget, though, they're asking for 4% of the overall going to projects for safe routes to schools. And we anticipate that means each agency would work closely with their local school districts and determine what projects or, or needs there may be in an individual community. When we talk about 10% going to community enhancements, these are specific to projects that would be utilized in more downtown or urban areas. Um, it might be a, a median it could be parking lots, it could be park and ride, it could be signage, all kinds of things that are not road repair per se, but may in fact do something to enhance the community connectivity and, and the viability of the community core. But again, the entire 50% is completely controlled by the local agency. So what does this mean for the county? Uh, at this point, it means a little over $5 million a year that could be allocated to improve local streets and roads, bicycle and pedestrian, all these things we've just been talking about. That's over 45, in fact, almost $46 million over nine years for the regional projects. And again, we've been working very closely with staff to help um, them tell us you know, what we need to see. The thing we know for sure is that as this plan moves forward, it's critical that everybody in the county has something representative in the plan for their community. We spent a lot of time with the community advisory council seeing all of them, and they named very specific projects that they wanted to see and make sure that the county was you know, coming back to them and they were not, for example, everything happening in the south end of the county or everything happening in the north end. They wanted to see some sort of a um, balanced approach to that, which I think from what we've seen so far that the county has done. So. In April and May, we're continuing to make presentations for all of the various, um, the county and the various cities. And then at May 4th, we're going to be having a special meeting with the Slowcock Board to go over the proposed uh, projects and begin the discussion about the regional investments that might be uh, considered moving forward. In June, the board will make a determination whether or not to ask um, for an approval of the plan and then in turn to have that plan come back here to the Board of Supervisors and ask whether the Board of Supervisors would then put that on the ballot for November. That would happen in the July meeting. And then theoretically on July 19th, should they decide to move forward, this board would move forward to place that on the ballot for the consideration by voters in the November election. That concludes my portion of the program. I'm going to pass that back over to staff to talk about the specifics in terms of the projects. And I think after that's been concluded, we can tag team any questions that you might have. All right. Um, thanks, Kendall. Um, to kind of follow on what Kendall mentioned, the county would be looking at about $45 million in the local roads improvement category. And this would be a breakdown of what that would entail over a nine-year program. So $33 million of it would be going towards road rehabilitation. 9.2 million into just various community enhancements, and then 3.7 million in safe routes to school. Um, the last two categories, those are just minimum expectations. These were derived based off of a distribution formula that was also approved by the SLOCOG board on April 6th. Uh, to look at actual community projects that could move forward uh, if this funding source was approved by the voters, um, these are a first cut list that we've kind of vetted through um, various discussions we've had with the advisory councils in the past. These are ones that have welled up as being important. We would expect to go back to the advisory councils over the next months and a half to clarify or assure that this is the list to move forward to put into an expenditure plan. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of connections, a lot of pedestrian connections in communities, which is a kind of fill in the gap um, most of our communities have incomplete sidewalks, and so this would provide an opportunity to at least close important gaps in and around schools, leading to parks, leading to central business districts. 
Um, in other areas, again, uh, you see just a significant amount of ped pass, sidewalks improvements that we would be putting into um, the program. Uh, theater drive bike lanes would be a, a key regional connection as well, uh, particularly uh, trying to facilitate flow and circulation in and around Templeton schools. That's an important element. Um, what a tax measure may provide the county is a means to fund these projects. Currently, um, we've been trying to pursue grants through the active transportation program, which was developed uh, two or three years ago. And we've been very unsuccessful in getting our applications approved. Prior to that, when we had more specific safe routes to school and bike of funds committed, we had been very successful. So this may just be a, an alternative way to fund those projects. In turning to road rehabilitation, that overall $33 million that could be availed on a passage of such a measure, we would look at um, an expected distribution along these lines to the various communities. And then we still have a significant need of regional arterial and collector roads that have to be addressed. So approximately two thirds of that would be focused towards that effort. Um, in all though, um, given the uh, community betterments, the St. Francis <coughs> School, and then uh, the rough distribution of road rehabilitation, approximately 25 million of that 45 million would be going directly into communities to kind of address uh, lifestyle betterments and making sure that those issues are addressed. Um, so with that, um, the first set of recommendations really is um, to seek your uh, input on the transportation investment plan as presented. Uh, provide any comments on the list of the proposed local projects for inclusion in the expenditure plan. And then uh, direct staff to continue work effort with SLOCOG to develop a final transportation expenditure plan and return to your board uh, by August 8th, uh, by August for a potential ballot measure in November. Uh, again, what was mentioned was the target is to be back July 19th. Um, all the cities and councils, the city councils are all receiving the same presentation. And then there would also be a subsequent review by the city and uh, cities, city councils in June into July once uh, SLOCOG board act on it in June. The second aspect of this item is the formation of a local transportation authority. This is an item that is established under the public utilities codes, which speaks directly to setting up uh, sales tax measures for transportation and allows your board to essentially adopt um, an independent body to be that local transportation authority or to select the regional transportation planning agency. So SLOCOG being amply represented in the region would be the uh, local transportation authority. Um, they would also be assigned duties under the revenue code to essentially collect and process that tax, or they wouldn't be collecting the tax, but they would be distributing the tax under this program. So the authority for the distribution of the tax uh, would mean setting them up as a use tax district, and that would be part of the resolution before you today. You know, finally, on the, the transportation authority, as Kendall mentioned, there's um, elements that need to be done for governance of a local transportation authority and use of the tax measure revenues. And the prominent ones being defining an oversight committee, uh, having clear auditing and reporting responsibilities, and then um, also just to assure that uh, any new revenues don't fully supplement existing revenues into transportation. Uh, some means to address uh, maintaining the current funding level into transportation from the various jurisdictions. These are all issues that are uh, still in progress and um, uh, SLOCOG and Mr. DeCarly have been outreaching with the city managers to kind of work on those elements. Uh, that would be a package that would then be presented in front of uh, SLOCOG board in June but would ultimately come back to your board for approval before it would ever be sent to um, the uh, November ballot measure. Um, so with that, um, this second recommendation is really adopt the attached resolution to designate San Luis Council of Governments 
to be the regional local transportation authority and designate them as a use tax um, district specifically for regional transportation revenues. And that concludes our report. We'll be happy to answer any questions. So I'll bring it back to the board before we go out to public comments for any questions. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dave, that second to last slide you just showed us, the creation of the text uh, district authority for the, where are we here, um, the use, the designation of a use tax district. So right now our slow cog, of which we're all part, um, accepts federal and state monies and plans regional improvements, et cetera. But they've never been this before. So the one thing I'm ask, uh, I'm curious about is the la very last bullet point. It would it would enact an ordinance, and then it would be partially their responsibility to what ensure local agency maintenance of current funding. Or um, does that does that go ahead? Yeah, to expand on what the ordinance would be is you're creating an ordinance that's going to govern essentially the uh, local transportation authority and the administration of this tax measure. And that would be something that would be presented in front of the voters, um, you know, with a, a complete description of what the requirements are. So the uh, the requirements would be spelled out in terms of how an oversight committee would be mm -hmm. created and right. who would be selected in, on that panel. And then the last bullet point there about local agency maintenance of current funding would just be um, a, a, dis, a uh, requirement that would focus on jurisdictions just maintaining kind of their current funding level into transportation so that their, they would their pre-tax level is that what that means this would not be related to sales tax in any That's way what I mean. it would so, just be so, so say our budget maybe you look at an average over 10 years of the county budget for example mm -hmm. then this body would have some role in ensuring that each agency including the county kind of maintained what their pre-sales tax uh that's right. correct, is that essentially, um, and different entities uh, or authorities that have been credited in the past have, say, different ways of arriving at that in terms of making sure that, say, over the last three years or five years average of what's been going towards transportation is maintained just so that um, this new money is not supplanting that money. But and, I, and, I, and I guess that leads me to my, my general question, which is, to date, even though the county and every city in this county works with SLOCOG and they are part of SLOCOG, basically they look to SLOCOG to take, bring certain regional money or certain monies into the area to be used for regional transportation. And then we all sit on the board that decides how to prioritize that money. But to date, the, the SLOCOG agency has never had the authority to come into a city or a county and say, look, we don't think you're putting up the money that you should be for your share of the transportation. But it looks like that's kind of part of this new world we'll enter into. Well, to be clear, wouldn't characterize it as being um, a negative. It's just essentially a provision to make sure and assure voters, really, that jurisdictions will not just displace not their current level of funding and use the sales tax money in its place. Exactly. So that it's not necessarily that the Slocog board would be governing or dictating terms to jurisdiction. It, it sounds like they'll have a role where they didn't before in each agency's use of transportation money. And I'm, I'm thinking specifically, before I came onto the board, the county's road maintenance monies were short because we were in the recession and we made, we, we as in the county board made the decision, yeah, we're not gonna use that money because we just don't have enough. We're, we're prioritizing our money and we don't have enough really to put to spend the normal amounts, if whatever normal is, the normal amounts on our road maintenance, so we're going to wait. That was a conscious decision that the board made. Now that there's money to, we're trying to catch up, and we are spending more money. But my point here is we would be in more of a financial partnership than we had in the past, given that this authority would have the opportunity to at least advise, I think you need to put your money on your roads as you know, keep it at a normal, quote unquote, normal level, pre-tax level, and then the tax will augment that or enhance that. Dave, if, if I may just, just address that for a second. Thank you. Um, 
The first thing that happens when a regional agency of any type goes to a local municipality and says in any way, shape, or form we're considering controlling your budget or your land use decisions, um, people tend to get a little bit concerned. And one of the things that we've talked about with the city managers and also the county administrator is, yes, the intention of the funds is to supplement what you have. That being said, each jurisdiction in this county has a very different um, investment structure or plan with the way they've done their local streets and roads. And it's very possible that one agency funded a whole lot in three years and then doesn't have as much to fund in the next three. So forcing them to keep up that level doesn't really work. So at this point, that maintenance of current funding is a conceptual piece. And we're trying to find a way working with the local agencies to find language that will work in terms of the, the intent or the spirit of the half cent sales tax, but will not constrain a jurisdiction to have to wait for Slowcog to make a decision on wh how they can spend their money. So it's, it's a very, um, I would say it's a very fluid situation at this point. I don't know if the county administrator wants to weigh in on that as well, because I know you were part of that conversation. Yeah, sure. Dan Buckshire, County Administrator. And yes, we did have a rather lengthy lengthy discussion on this topic last Friday, the city managers, Slocog, and, and myself. And, you know, as was noted, the intent is that, you know, this money would be incremental to what's being spent. That, uh, you know, if we receive $5 million a year from this Slocog sales tax, if it were to be effectuated, that we're not going to turn around and cut our budget by $5 million from roads and that there's no net gain from, from this funding. Um, and that's the general intent. That said, uh, I, I have con would have significant concerns if it were written so stringently that your board didn't have discretion over allocation of funds. So it's finding that happy medium of honoring the intent, yet allowing for some local flexibility and discretion in terms of what we allocate. And I, I feel comfortable we can get there. Other areas have dealt with this issue in the past um, and have come up with MOEs that that meet that intent, but yet still allow some local discretion. And we have MOE agreements for uh, other types of funding, Prop 172, public safety funding is an example, the unclaimed gas tax that the Agricultural Commissioner's Office receives, and they're all structured a little differently, um, but again, it's to strike that balance of, of honoring the intent of the voters to have this be incremental, but yet still allow for some local discretion. And I appreciate all of the explanations. That, for me, that was... it. I guess, the, so my question, and, and we all know each other, and we all trust each other, and we're working here today in 2016, but I know that when we put these things into place in 2050, somebody else is going to be here, and somebody else is going to be working with all this. So for me, it was just interesting, and I wanted to make sure I didn't misunderstand that it does kind of partner you in a small way on transportation funds. In other words, we start to be all a little more regional about things. Okay, thank you for... Um, Okay, I'm going to open the floor up to public comments on this item, and we have four speaker slips. I will begin with Eric Greening, followed by Myron Amarine. Amarine? I'm Eric Greening, and we are now seeing more detail in the expenditure plan than we saw at Slocog, and I just got kind of hit upside the head by another piece, because I already saw the 7% as grossly inadequate for the transit agencies, which already, as part of their legal requirement, provide door-to-door -door paratransit service with the funds they have, uh, that we're going to create a whole bunch of new point-to-point -point service increases at the same time as we've been actually trying to shift people who can use fixed route to fixed route, given that the same investment in fixed route can provide about 15 to 20 times more rides than in the point to point. Um, obviously, we need to reach the people who are now, now being reached with point to point options. So I certainly can see some expansion, but having only 6% for the transit agencies, it's going to basically everything that's now in the short-range transit plan and coordinated human services transportation plan that are recommendations that have been arrived at through public process, I don't see how we can make a dent in it 
with that 6%, especially given the language allocated to capital improvements and operational improvements meant to increase frequency of current service. That's a wall around that money. That says not for system preservation, not for cut prevention, not for span of service. There were more people asking for span of service than for frequency through both processes and the recommendations reflect it. In addition, I have a concern about the 1% dedicated to education and outreach meant to get people out of, et cetera, et cetera. We already have people doing that. This would be in addition to, this would be $250,000 a year dedicated to. This is like a bunch more people telling people to ride the bus that may still be vulnerable to being cut because apparently there's nothing in this transit money that would prevent the system being cut if the LTF money comes short. So I see huge, huge, huge problems with this expenditure plan, especially on the transit side, but on the bike and pedestrian, I also want to mention that I don't see the Churro Valley Trail, which has also gone through a considerable public process, and I'd like to think that there would at least be the resources to get it from slow to quest to college. But going back to transit, um, well, I think you know my concerns. Essentially, this language is extremely limiting, straightjacketing. We will be forced to live with it if it's in there, and we have a lot more needs besides simply increasing the frequency of the current service. This would constrain new routes, span of service, all the rest of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Greening. Myron Amarine, followed by Mike Brown. Did I pronounce your last name right? Uh, good afternoon. Chair Compton and board members, Myron Amarine. I'm going to be wearing two hats today. Dan Rivar had to leave, so I'm going to do a little bit about the uh, Slow County Bike. But first of all, as an individual who's lived through this process before in Sacramento County, um, what a better way to start to get things to happen. And with the Bike to Work Month proclamation just before this item, what a better way and what a better bang for the buck in San Luis Obispo City, probably in five cities and in Morro Bay and in Cayucas, for every dollar the locals spend, there's going to be two to three dollars spent by tourists. That's all going to go into our pot, into this tax initiative for transportation. Um, in 1989, Sacramento was one of the first self-help counties. They just barely squeaked by with 67 percent for a 20-year program. The program went through the 20 years, and in 2009, they got 76% of the vote. They had a huge package. They had something for everybody, and you wouldn't believe how big the freeways and interchanges are and how much the bike lanes and bike trails are with this project. Every matching dollar counts. Um, we'll have another speaker talk about the county bikeway plan, but there's a major chance to develop the new aggressive bikeway plan. For uh, Dan Rivar and the uh, Slow Bike County, um, I'll just read some of his uh, comments. Uh, Slow Bike County exists to work on behalf of local residents that believe in a complete network of safe streets for biking, walking, and driving is absolutely uh, essential to the local quality of life. This viewpoint isn't exclusive to people that support us. It is pervasive, shared by the parents and children looking for a safe route to schools, business leaders hoping for a healthier commute route and options for their employees, and for you, the decision makers, and looking for ways to manage traffic congestion and on a regional scale to help residents live happy, healthy lives while being good stewards of your community with its limited resources. Uh, we understand that you're in a rock, between a rock and a hard place, but it's, this is your opportunity to allow the voters to choose and to get self-help working within the county. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Brown, filed by Dale Gustin. Uh, Madam Chair, Supervisors, Mike Brown representing CoLab. We were a little surprised to see this item today. Um, the designation of this local transportation authority the write-up in part states that designation of the authority is not an action uh, to support the sales tax measure, but only an organizational step in providing the option to pursue a sales tax measure. 
So why does it have to be adopted today? You'd think you'd do this after you, you decided to support a sales tax measure or as part of your action later uh, if this board determines to actually support a sales tax measure. So if you vote to the, for this today, what are you really saying? So is there some legal reason or something that it has to be here at this juncture ahead of the rest of this process? And then in the in the big picture on this, we think uh, maintenance of effort is really important. In fact, we think that uh, the state, the counties, the cities don't really spend enough on uh, transportation and other infrastructure, and that actually it would be good if the ordinance, and I think it would go to solving this uh, problem that the county administrator was talking about because it is hard to go back and see who spent what and what that means, but uh, require that some percentage of general revenue each year on an incremental and growing basis be committed to the road program. It would be a real positive commitment uh, and say that roads are a top priority and we want to do that. Um, to just go out and adopt a new sales tax um, absent something like that is simply an admission that you're broke and that uh, you don't have enough money to perform this basic uh, fundamental function and that you have to go back to the taxpayers and ask for more money. Um, finally, on this uh, oversight committee, um, you know, many groups would be interested in perhaps having a representative on that committee, but if it's not going to be determined which groups are going to get to be on the committee until after the vote is set or perhaps after the vote itself, how would people know they really wanted to support it? Thank you. Dale Gustin, followed by another Dale, Dale Sutliff. Thank you. Uh, Having attended uh, city council meetings in Paso Robles for over 35 years, I uh, remember Frank Meacham when he was a councilman and a mayor chastising me for telling them to not drop the loop road. <laughs> and uh, he got tired of me bringing that up. That was the solution to the 101-46 uh, problem. And uh, it was a part of the master circulation plan at that time for over 20 years. Uh, I feel that using uh, local so uh, sales tax funds for state highways is not a good idea. They are responsible for those state highways. We need to push them harder to make them do that. Let's use those funds for other than state highways within the county. And I can tell you that when this similar item came before the city council and passed the Robles recently, and the people actually voted it in for a half cent sales tax, they did have an oversight committee in that. So you gotta stress that oversight committee if you wanna have a chance of getting this passed. And I know you're just setting it up for now to see if there's enough sentiment for it. I'm not sure the sentiment is there. I hear pros and cons from both sides, and I don't know. I knew on the uh, water basin that what the sentiment was, but I don't know what it is on this sales tax yet. It's uh, kind of bouncing back and forth, so good luck on it. Uh, but if you're gonna have a part of it, make sure you have a good citizen oversight committee. That's the only way you're gonna sell it. Thank you. Dale Sutliff. And that's our last speaker slip. So if you wish to speak about this, please turn in a speaker slip. Thank you, Madam Chairman and Board. Uh, my name is Dale Sutliff. I'm the Chairman of the County Bicycle Advisory Committee. Um, I just want to take a few moments to share with you what you already know, which the bicycle plan update is currently out for public review draft. Uh, will come before you this summer, hopefully. And to, and to state that it's, a, in my view, a much improved plan over the previous plan with really important projects that meet not only the cycling needs but uh, share the road and, and with all the multiple multiplicity of users. What I do want to say 
as we've seen over the years, and I've lived in this community for 40 years, <laughs> um, the continued, continued dimin diminution of funding. <laughs> and now it's, since the recession, it's almost taken, <laughs> it's escalated. Without, you can have the best plan in the world, but without funding, you got nothing. <laughs> So there are some key projects that are going to come before you, uh, not only from our source, but many, many sources. And you all know, I, we know that the federal and state funds are drying up, although I echo the previous comments. Uh, we really need to be much more self-sustaining in our county. Um, I'll just finish with, uh, in 1952, a uh, renowned cultural geographer, J.B. Jackson, in one of his writings, <clears throat> and as you'll recall, that was the advent of the, the whole infrastructure of the country, uh, the Eisenhower f highway system, the whole nine yards. And his concern in 1952 was this is a really great, but his concern down the road is how we're going to maintain and sustain that. I would only say here we are. <laughs> um, and you've heard about self-help counties. I think that's where we're headed. And I think that we really have to step up and ask all of our users. Uh, we're working really hard to close gaps and support commuters uh, in the bike plan, uh, all of that um, to get a much better system in the county. And with that, I thank you for your time and hope that you'll support moving this ahead. Thank you. Okay, I have no more speaker slips for this issue, so I will bring it back to the board for questions or comments. One, and then I have some. Okay, Supervisor Arnold. Okay, <clears throat> I guess I'll go first. And I'll be a little bit of a repeat um, of the, com the same comments that I made at Slocog. You know, and Kendall said it at the very beginning of her, um, her presentation, Sacramento is failing to bring the dollar, the transportation dollars back to local jurisdictions, and that's been happening for a little while, but not to the extent we saw it this last fall when our um, state transportation of funds were just cut pretty suddenly. So in, at SoCog, we were going along. We were budgeting for the projects that and prioritizing projects and so forth. So this all began, I think this effort for um, a new source of funding began when the STIP funds were suddenly cut and along with that went some of the projects that everyone was just waiting to start to see uh, come to fruition. And I've been traveling or as president of Slocog with Ron up to the, to, at the state level and, and having these discussions. And we know that declining tax revenue, gas tax, gas, uh, gas tax revenue is part of the problem with the changes in, um, in our vehicles and so forth. But it, it is, well, and Kendall said this too, Sacramento has failed to adjust the gas tax as well. So, Increased costs due to deferred maintenance, that's been a priority problem that uh, the state government's had. And then the one that's really annoying me the most is the diversion of existing state transportation revenues for non-transportation purposes. We know we have billions of dollars in truck weight fees that our uh, truckers pay into every year and it goes elsewhere. Um, the, st the comments I'm taking right out of the California's current transportation funding situation out of the CTC, the California Transfer... Transportation Commission um, presentation that they've been taking all, all over the state. So all that being said, we've, we've started to see the decline in um, state dollars coming down. Every city in the county here has created a new source of funding to t start to take care of their own roads and become self-sustaining. The county's done the same thing, and we have started to put millions of dollars back into road maintenance um, as the recession ends and we have that money to go forward. Um, somebody mentioned um, being broke. Well, the state's certainly not broke. In fact, they're recognizing billions of dollars in unanticipated uh, general fund revenue, and the county's done very well, too. The money's there to prioritize if that's the political will. And I do think that, that when t in talking to voters, they do expect roads, roads and infrastructure to be part of our main responsibility. And the rest of it, everyone in this county um, cares about our open space and our recreational opportunities. So I just want to point out, um, Slocog's done a fantastic job 
the years that I've been involved these last few years uh, with the monies that they've been able to uh, scratch out of Sacramento. And then, um, as I said, we have enhanced uh, local uh, local shares. But as an example, the county just in this past year has put a million and a half dollars into the Bob Jones Trail, a million dollars into the Pismo Preserve for open space, and the the list goes on. We have uh, started up. We heard a presentation today on our um, bicycle programs, our safe routes to school. Um, we have been moving forward. Um, that makes a difference to me, and I think that, are we going to have everything instantly? No, but who's paying the bill, and that's the taxpayers, and that leads me um, to maybe my final comment. Uh, I ran for office, and I'm actually running again for office, um, trying to tell the voters in my district that I am there to hold government accountable. And when we uh, talk about Sacramento uh, just diverting transportation dollars and doing other things with it and then letting us fend for ourselves or reach into the, um, to the pockets of the taxpayers here locally to take care of state roads, as I said, uh, counties have stepped up and asked for sales tax. I'm hearing that, too, from my constituents. We just voted in the sales tax for our local roads. At the county, we've had commitment, and um, we'll be ready to hopefully commit again uh, millions of dollars out of our general fund to um, help bring our own 1,000 miles of county roads in, uh, up to speed. Right now, the special session is still going on. The state legislature has not finished, or they haven't said finally, uh, there is no more money coming. They are working on it. So I would rather put our efforts into lobbying that, making sure that's our government too. And uh, I, there seems to be optimism. I talked to our, our county lobbyists yesterday, uh, some optimism that the, some of this dip funding, at least a mini fix, uh, could be will be worked out. And with some pressure that we'll start to see the funds return of the funds that we expect and that our voters and taxpayers expect. So in an effort to hold government accountable, um, and in a year where the money's there, I just do not have the appetite to ask the taxpayers to reach into their pocket again and um, uh, bring, bring more money into uh, this. I think it's a prioritization problem, and that's where I want to uh, put my efforts. Okay, so I don't see any other lights on, so I'll make my comments. And um, unfortunately, I was out of town at the Slocog meeting where this was all presented. I did watch the video, and I saw that, and I was at the meeting prior to that. Um, I had a dad that turned 90, and I, so I went home to surprise him for his 90th birthday party. Um, so I'm going to make my comments, I guess, today. Um, you know, I, I look at this as sort of a tough love situation, and, and Kendall, you said it, and you said it before, too. I mean, this Sacramento has failed, so I look at it. It's like a child that spent their allowance, and then they come back at the end of the month and want more, more money. So we're sort of feeding the beast if we go ahead and do this, in my mind. Um, I look at the state of California, and the last estimate I heard was we're $6 billion over, and that's from people paying income taxes uh, in excess. The state's giving away money to special interest groups, you know, for the trains, whatever they want, and then they're not putting the money toward transportation. So then we're coming back to our taxpayers and saying, again, now we're going to hitch up again for more money. Um, so again, it's not prioritizing. So I, I was interested in the history of, of constitutional amendments dedicated to transportation. And uh, Prop uh, 42 in 2002 was passed by 70% support, which is a really high support. And that promised that the sales tax on fuel would be used for maintaining and expanding highways, roads, and bridges. And there's no disagreement, and, and I don't doubt the numbers that were shown here today about the gas tax going from 29% in 1993 down to 12% in 2015. I mean, that's, that's a reality we're all dealing with. Then... California's passed Prop 22 in 2010. Again, that promised transportation taxes wouldn't be borrowed from for non-transportation purposes. But despite all these guarantees that were given to us, the voters, who are paying the taxes, the legislature found loopholes in those and took our transportation dollars and diverted them to the benefits of the general fund. So meanwhile, then we're being asked to come up with more money. So again, I go back to this, like a tough love situation. Vehicle weight fees, that's over a billion a year. That was 
proposed and and um, made a reality to fix the roads from the heavy weights of vehicles that were on the roads. So that was diverted in the recession. So again, I'm looking at everything is diverted and they're coming back to us and asking us for money. And, and when you say a half a cent, is that really a lot? And you know, that comes to my mind. No, that's not really a lot, but it's rewarding bad behavior for not ponying up and doing it right the first time. <laughs> Just in my own district, a couple weeks ago, we had a CEQA mitigation issue with oak trees that's going to cost over a million dollars. If that's happening in my district, and that's just one project, i got to believe that's happening all over California. The, the whole process to me was a little bit permuted, a little bit similar to what I felt the, what was going on with the water district. So several months ago, we did a study by a different consulting firm, and we asked would would um, citizens support a, a quarter cent or half cent sales tax? It came back. I don't remember what the exact percentage was, but it was pretty overwhelmingly. We could afford it, but we don't want to pay it because we don't trust our government to spend it. Same thing we saw with Prop 42 and Prop 22. We don't trust our government, so we want to put these things in place, but then the government squanders it. So then we came back after that study, immediately that same meeting, and said, let's go back out to the voters again. So we designed a new study to go out to the voters, and basically with this study, what we said was, we're going to give you all these goodies. We're going to kind of bribe you with the candy so that you vote for it. We're going to give you goodies for the Bob Jones Trail. We're going to give you bike paths. We're going to give you um, blah, blah, blah. Will you vote for it then? So we had to give away stuff to get people, in my mind, to vote for it, which I'm not crazy about doing for that. Um, so I believe, too, that there's an issue with saying we need to do a campaign to pass something. I don't like that. I also look at the fact that every one of the seven cities, and I, I just had an email last night because I wasn't sure it was every one of the seven cities that had passed it, but every one of the seven cities has passed a half-cent sales tax. So they're already doing that. Um, and I, I realize half of it is going to be paid for, I, I believe you mentioned this today, Kendall, um, by, by visitors coming to this county. This is a heavy tourism county. It's heavily <laughs> dependent on tourism. So while I don't necessarily have a problem in being self-sustaining, I want to be self-sustaining. I do have a problem with us giving our tax money, and then that's not enough, and then we have to be self-sustaining on top of that. So, um, you know, I don't have a problem with pedestrian enhancements, all that. I just don't like the fact that if it's being squandered in the first place, then we're coming back and asking to, to basically pony up a second time and pay for it. So um, I, I, it's kind of like a tough love situation to me. So I, I can't support this. Um, I, I realize I, I did have a question. Uh, you mentioned that 80% of the population, I think you had said. I'm kind of curious to hear, where is that population in L.A. and San Francisco? It's throughout? Okay. So I was kind of curious to see where that was distributed. You, you can come up if you want. Uh, just a couple things I just wanted to clarify. On the polling, the reason some of these things came up is when we asked people, we said, we asked them. Why would you what, support it? What, no, no. What would you want? What would you like to mm -hmm. see? And it was consistent countywide. And at this point, 60, almost 64% of the registered voters said that they would, in fact, support it. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, it, the last poll, just you know, it was 45%. Mm -hmm. um, but also, it, what we found, and this is not just here, it's in other jurisdictions, if if municipal agencies in a vacuum figure out what they think the projects are, it is not usually very successful because the person on the street has a much different view. Oh, I agree. You know, you're spending five hundred to six hundred dollars a year in car repairs because of their poorly maintained roads. Right. I don't disagree yeah, with you yeah. on anything you just said. I just wanted, and, yeah. and I, I will say that probably the number one complaint in my district is the roads. So, I mean, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a conundrum that we're faced with. We need to spend the money. We know we do. We've um, spent more as a county on the roads. Sure. They're not great. I actually have a pothole in Oceana where someone planted a plant in the pothole because they're so bad. And, and I grew up in Chicago where the roads are really bad. So um, I totally get that. My issue is just you keep coming back, coming back, coming back. I also have an issue with uh, on this, this pie chart. Um, you said 112 million to local to local 112.5 million to local road repairs and for regional products 56.2. I do have a problem, and I, I think you mentioned earlier that those are the state roads. And to me, who drives up from South County every day, the biggest issue I have, even if I whichever route I go, is is Highway 101. It causes me to go alternate routes, going home or coming because of the congestion through Shell Beach. Well, what we've heard from the jurisdictions on those local streets and roads, if someone chose to, if that was their if they're desire, but for the most part, we're hearing residential roads, not not Highway 101. And there are some arterials that definitely would benefit or could benefit if that's where the jurisdiction wanted to pay their money. But you know, it's it, it, you're absolutely correct that 
Cal Caltrans has not spent as much, and the state of California has not spent as much, in at least one county, in, in El Dorado as an example, they make the county pay for all of the improvements, which I can't even on, believe. On the state highways? Mm -hmm, on Highway 50. And see, to me, that's, that's crazy. just ludicrous. We're crazy. sending our money to them. Right. If they should at least be paying for the state highways. But the if advantage is on the, just, just factually, on the, the, uh, sorry, the counties that are self-help counties, the 21, um, those are San Diego, they are, LA County is one of them, but like Alameda, Sacramento, uh, Monterey's moving forward, Stanislaus is moving forward. Well, I don't want to know who's yep. moving forward. I just, I'm yeah, curious there, where there the population is. 81% is the percent of the population is in one already. In one already. Okay. Yep. So I'm trying to think of the other points that I, that I wanted to make, but um, basically, I mean, I think if you give more way to people, they're going to vote for it. So uh, I think it's a high threshold, you know, two-thirds. I'm glad it's a high threshold to increase taxes. It sounds like it's not a penny, and why am I bickering over a penny? But, I mean, it adds up to a substantial amount of money, nine years, $225 million. And I also have a concern that after nine years, they're going to come back and say we need it again because the more counties that become self-help counties, then the state feels less responsible to have to help the county, and then they're going to squander our money on other things. So I guess those are my points, and I'll shut up and see if there's anybody else that wants to speak. Okay, Supervisor Hill. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I don't think there would be any disagreement with uh, with your remarks or, or, or Supervisor Arnold's remarks in terms of um, disappointment with um, with the state government or even the federal government in terms of uh, things becoming increasingly not just dysfunctional at times and not just unfair, but um, just a failure to tackle big problems. I, you know, I, I don't think that there's any disagreement there. I guess the question is, is, is really one of logic. I mean, this is, a, this is a mechanism that I think we would be wise to adopt regardless of, um, of, of what was going on in Sacramento because it allows us to have a certain share of money that allows us also to apply for grants and funding that we're just not eligible to do because we don't have the match. Um, so essentially the, the, the protest that you're recommending is we don't like what they're doing, so let's do nothing on our end. I don't really see that as governing. I see that as, um, you know, just sort of the throwing in the towel because it's not going to change anything. This is, this is a mechanism meant to empower us to some degree on the level of funding. But even more than that, really what we're asked today is not to uh, adopt a tax. It's to adopt something that would allow the voters to have a choice. So you conflate an opposition to taxes or, uh, or even uh, this way of, of working um, to uh, provide uh, transportation infrastructure with what's really being asked of us is to give the voters a choice to see of it. They may very well reject it. Um, and I certainly see that there's, you know, there's, depending on what the issue is, the voters may um, find themselves wanting to say no, but it doesn't advance the cause. I mean, putting more money into our roads is not going to solve the congestion problems that are um, already occurring throughout the county, and they are not going to provide the relief that people expect um, regardless. So the choice is, is to you know, sit on our hands and, 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 and stick our tongue out at Sacramento or say, let's move forward and see what the voters think and see if we can educate them on how these things work because we also know and that's part of our job because we kind of you know part of part of what happens is that we're um we have more time to spend on this stuff than the average uh, citizen that's busy with, you know, with their jobs and their lives and, and their families. And so we know and we agree. I don't think that that is an ideological uh, uh, position about whether there's um, a failure to tackle these big problems in Sacramento. I'll, I, we could probably, you know, write, write a list all day of things that we wish they were doing. Um, but that's not going to get us anywhere and it's not going to it's not going to resolve anything so i think we should at least do what we can to um to talk to the public i know that people that i've spoken to in the business community and people that are concerned about um the economic health of this community uh know that inf transportation infrastructure is going to be a big part of this because it's going to be a big part of housing and it's going to be a big part of our ability to uh, sustain a certain amount of commercial growth and 
And um, I, with that, I, I would recommend that we, we move forward with, uh, with, this, with the staff recommendations. That's my motion. We second. have still second. some more comment. Oh, you and don't want to comment? You just want to well, second it? I'll, I do want to comment, okay. but let's get a motion seconded on the floor. Okay, so we have a motion by Supervisor I, Hill and a second by Supervisor so. Gibson and still open for comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. And just, just to clarify the motion, there was one. There was one action item and, a, and three uh, items of direction, and right. there are a couple bits of direction that I think we might usefully clarify for, for staff. Uh, but I wholeheartedly endorse the uh, action item, which is to you know, take the necessary steps to designate a local transportation authority. You know, this is a, a, a matter of, uh, uh, recall our Slocog board uh, voted uh, 10 to 1 to move forward on this, and this is a procedural step that sets up the framework. Um, you know, Supervisor Hill covered uh, a number of the uh, of the conceptual uh, areas uh, in terms of the discussion that had gone forward. And if we had uh, more time, and it was actually relevant to what we were doing today, I mean, I would like to explore the premises of some of your comments, both Supervisor Compton and Supervisor Arnold. The thought that the state is squandering. It's uh, transportation dollars. I'd ask, you know, particularly Supervisor Meacham, if the monies the state has put into the uh, uh, betterments on Highway 46 has been uh, squandered. Uh, you know, we've seen a number of uh, improvements in Highway 101. Uh, you know, the, the, the reality is, I, yeah, I think we all can agree, Sacramento has failed. Uh, and uh, I don't think it's an either, uh, either or situation as to, to what we do. Uh, you know, I, I would love to bring forward uh, a uh, proposal for support of a number of, of different solutions that are uh, being floated in the legislature. The governor has a uh, has a solution of uh, of a three point six billion dollar transportation uh, package, and there have been uh, twenty seven counties to date who have uh, endorsed a resolution supporting that. I think I frankly think ours should be one of them. I think that's one way to show some solidarity with our county friends. And this is not an ideological thing. Uh, you know, this, uh, this, this resolution of support on 3.6 billion has been passed by such notable uh, bastions of liberal thought as uh, Tuolumne County, San Joaquin County, Trinity, Siskiyou, uh, Mono County, uh, Alpine County. Uh, this has wide, wide bipartisan support. The irony of it is that the governor's $3.6 billion package doesn't start to make progress on the problems that this state, both at the state level and the local level, uh, face. It's uh, widely understood by uh, groups such as the C uh, California State Association of Counties, the League of Cities, um, the business community, that we need something more like $6 billion a year in some kind of rational transportation funding to, to make some progress here. So. Um, Senator Bell, among others, has uh, been floating ideas that would get, a, get us there. And, uh, you know, if we really want to be serious about uh, actually solving some of our problems, I think it would behoove this county to, to step up and uh, uh, step up and, and uh, lend our voice in support of, of uh, actual solutions. But, you know, beyond, beyond that, the premise is Supervisor Arnold suggests that, uh, no, we can't, we, we shouldn't go out for, the, for a tax because the county is handling this. I'd ask our public works department, uh, you know, again, rhetorically, how's our pavement condition index doing? Um, it's going down. Um, you know, we, we need to show tough love uh, to Sacramento. Uh, fine, but what does that get us? You know, we, within the last couple of years, put forward our most recent regional transportation uh, plan, uh, which identified over 20 years, uh, $4 billion worth of projects, some $200 million a year. Uh, at that time, uh, we identified about an expected $1 billion a year, and that's been cut in half, perhaps, maybe less. Uh, maybe less than half now is what we're, what we're expect, expecting. So if we're, if we're seeing $200 million a year of, uh, of, of needed improvements, and we're talking a half cent sales tax uh, that's gonna bring in $25 million a year. We're far from um, filling in the gaps and, and letting the state off the hook. Uh, you can be rest assured that uh, our action here is immaterial to a uh, state level conversation uh, with 39 million people in the state, but it's not immaterial here. 
So again, this isn't the agendized item to take on uh, whether one favors uh, uh, voting a half cent sales tax in or, or not. But I, I really do question the premise that somehow putting uh, a very specific plan of action before the voters and asking them whether they are willing to pay for it out of their pockets and the pockets of uh, visitors to this county is somehow pandering or giving away things to voters. That, that premise makes no sense to me at all. So with that, in terms of um, the motion, there was a, uh, uh, a specific uh, uh, action item on the LTA. But going back to the uh, transportation um, investment plan, I would ask a couple of questions. One of them uh, relative to uh, Mr. Greening's um, question about uh, transit funding. You know, we can have a discussion as to how much of a, of a sales tax measure we think should go to transit, whether you think 7% uh, or 6% or 70% should go to transit. Um, I think the realities of the situation and hearing from the public that the 6 or 7% is about right. But I do uh, wonder about the restrictions that Mr. Greening noted. Uh, I take it that that was simply a summary of um, a proposed uh, transportation investment plan and that those, those uh, funds would not simply be limited to frequency of transit service but could be spent on span of service, new routes, whatever, and I'd just be sure in terms of direction to staff, it would be my thought, and I'd ask the motion maker for his concurrence, that, that we ask for a, a liberal interpretation of how those uh, transit funds might be spent. The transit providers did meet with us, and actually all of this information came from them and what they thought they would need in order to enhance or <clears throat> improve their services. So this is all coming from them. We anticipate having a more detailed list of what they'd like to invest the next go around by the time we come back to see you again. But they were, they were very... Um, they had a strong uh, support for those additional services for seniors and other folks that couldn't just use the right. system. So, And similarly, um, uh, in looking at other uh, bike and pedestrian improvements, Mr. Greening brought up the Choro Valley Trail, certainly a very worthy regional scale uh, recreational and commuting amenity that I think uh, stands to, to benefit this county in a number of ways, which brings me f first to the matter of the transportation investment plan. Is, is the list of projects there permissive or prescriptive in the sense that um, if, if, it's on the, if it's on the list, funds are allowed to be spent on it uh, or funds must be spent on an item that's on the list? It's kind of a combination. So some projects will be very definitive. We're going to fund this project. Others will be more illustrative. And some will, will basically say, we're putting X dollars towards this project to be matched by local money to be matched by some of the remaining funding we have. So we're working through some of those details on, on the bikeway projects, for instance. We're working through those as well as trying to break it, have something a little more definitive because we know there's some other quarters. So our fun. typical programming way of setting up a, a, a vision that's so much local match, so much in terms of this the, the proceeds. And uh, again, with the motion maker's concurrence, I'd, I'd ask that we be sure to include the Choro Valley Trail in the list of those that we might consider. <coughs> then do I further understand that we will refine the details of the transportation investment plan as to what might get spent on what project? So as an example, uh, your staff has defined a whole series of projects in the unincorporated communities. We're getting similar projects in all seven cities. We're getting similar projects from the transit operators. We're now pulling all those together. That will come back before the SLOCOG board at their May meeting. At the May meeting. And, yes. and then for f further action in terms of the ordinance and whatnot in July and or August. And uh, there is a process by which the details are nailed down before this is put before them. That's right. We're continuing to refine it and refine it and refine it. Right. And I wonder, uh, Ms. Flint might go ahead and just speak to a little bit of the support we've received from the business community on this because I think... Uh, that's been a, a striking uh, matter. I, uh, I, I know we have a representative of the chamber. Uh, I'm not going to put on the spot on this, but uh, that's why she's in the back row. Pretty, yes, <laughs> but, but still with insight. So you know, it just uh, to to know that 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 this process has been widely uh, widely vetted and and uh, quite. 
quite extensively. Well, I think that um, we've met, obviously, with the Downtown Association as well as the Chamber of Commerce. We've also met with local business leaders and business uh, coalitions from both engineering firms and um, goods movement, that sort of thing. And what we're finding, well, two things. One, although we do not have any definitive um, resolutions of support at this point, we're, we're believing that, in fact, that that will happen or could happen later. Um, what we've been hearing in terms of feedback is um, really overwhelming support for the matter because, one, a, these types of projects, especially it pertains to regional, the um, math notes that for every dollar of transportation investment in an area, you get a $5 bump in terms of your economic impact, which means more jobs. We've been approached from various union organizations here in the county, as well as, of course, employers that have said, hey, we would really like this. There's also um, definitely some concern and some support, I would say, from individuals that are looking to connect uh, goods movement, making it easier to move wine, olive oil, other things through. And just also as a side, um, there's absolutely no correlation between a decrease or a negative impact in trans I'm sorry in um, tourism uh, for any county that has enacted one of these types of measures there's just absolutely no relation so, to that at all so thank thank you Ms. And, and so again I think there's going to be plenty of time between uh, now and hopefully seeing this on the ballot in November to to debate the uh, the uh, pros and cons of this uh, I think there are a number of other extremely important reasons for the future of this county but as far as today I would uh, suggest that uh, you know Pending Mr. Meacham's comments, we've probably given staff what they need to take the next steps, and I look forward to that happening. Thank you, Madam Chair. You had to wait a long time. It's your turn now. I don't know if I should say anything now. But <laughs> okay, we'll call for a vote. I'm ready. Uh, you know, I, I somewhat concur with your point about kind of rewarding bad behavior. But by the same token, I remember clearly when I was a mayor, and we were going to put a half-cent sales tax on the ballot, and I talked the council out of it. We had higher um, property tax, we had higher TOT, we had higher sales tax than we ever had, we had higher reserves than we ever had. So how could you go ask the voter to support something at that point in time? So we didn't do it. And then years passed and now all seven cities have done that. Which tells me when we sat on the Council of Governments discussion, the seven cities would support this and they already have that half cent sales tax in place because they know we're getting behind. And I think that I, as we went through the budget discussions the last couple of years, we want to keep putting more money into roads and everything here. Well, at what point do we start falling? The, and that wasn't going to keep up with everything from what I understand. So how will we do that? And I guess I'm, I'm, I still go back to the basic premise of let the people decide. If they don't want to do this, okay. If they do want to do it, then we move ahead. And I think all things considered, if we'd have put a half cent sales tax out there to fund the Passworth groundwater basin, we might have won. You'll never know. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion and a second, a motion by Supervisor Hill and a second by, was it Supervisor Gibson? Okay, so I will ask for a roll call vote, please. And the motion maker agrees with the amendments, the direction that was Yeah, by generally Supervisor speaking, Gibson. though I would change it all to just fund 227, but we won't get into that. <laughs> that's okay. You weren't recognized Next discussion. Chair. And that's nice and that's recommendations one through four. One through four. Correct. Yes. Okay. Mr. Hill. Yes. Mr. Gibson. Yes. Mr. Meacham. Yes, ma'am. Miss Arnold. No. Miss Compton. No, ma'am. Okay, we're gonna adjourn this meeting. Our next meeting will be Tuesday, May 10th. Thank you very much.